Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me for this pre recorded video. The reason I'm not live, doctor's appointment this morning. Is that going to stop me from helping you process the market today? Not at all. So, we can talk about what's going on in the market. Most of all, we have PCE coming out at 8.30. So pay specific attention whether PCE goes up, which would put downward pressure on the market, or whether PCE comes in more down, which could give the market a chance to run. Also pay attention to the US dollar, which has broken its 200 day moving average to the higher side, higher US dollar, more downward pressure on the market. So here's what I'm thinking about what's going to happen today. First, when the debt ceiling does pass, the treasury market's gonna to have to create trillions of dollars worth of new treasuries. Now they can't do that with the stock market at new highs. So understand US treasury default swaps are the highest we've ever seen. NASDAQ call volume is the highest it's been in eight years and bank deposits and M2 money supply are experiencing the most severe drop since 1929. So what will correct this? Um, if the market happens to drop a little. So I'm not trying to scare everybody, but I'm trying to make you aware of the potential possibilities of what can go on and why there could be downward pressure on the market. I've got a couple of other stories to share. July Fed funds futures rate are now showing a 63.3% chance of a 25 basis point hike for June. Now we're not even talking about rate cuts yet, which the market has two rate cuts factored in before the end of the year. Um, the dark pool index had a massive drop on Thursday. Now, if you don't know what that means, I'll quickly explain. A drop in the DIX um, can be a warning that institutional investors are selling stocks, which could lead to a decline in the overall market. Again, putting downward pressure on the market. Now let's talk about NVIDIA. Now, it's been a while since I've seen a stock like NVIDIA, big tech, mega tech, rip the way it did higher. However, yesterday, there was $4.6 billion worth of NVIDIA trading going on. So I say to myself, psychology, do I think most of that trading is people buying at the highs or selling and taking profit, waiting for NVIDIA to come down and consolidate. Let's remember, people were calling NVIDIA 400 yesterday. It only went up to 385. It dropped to 367. It rebounded to 382. Again, there's a number of people that are selling and taking profits. Um, let's go to me. Let's go to my trade alert from yesterday. I mentioned Upstart. I mentioned a couple of stocks that were squeezing lately that could have some type of pullback if the market struggles. So I mentioned Upstart. I mentioned Carvana. I mentioned Affirm. So what did I do? Well, Upstart was down pretty big yesterday going into yesterday morning. However, that did not deter me. I said, I'm going to wait for upstart to spike. I'm going to grab entry into some puts and we'll go forward from there. So let me just share that posting so everybody knows what we're talking about. Okay. So I made a first, well, that's first posting. Here we go. Upstart. Okay. Contracts, $26 contract, shorting puts, $1.25. I ended up with about five or six of these. I sold these in at $1.25 and I exited out at $1.86, giving me a 50% profit. I'm still carrying these contracts, which are up 54% um, into today's market. And Upstart again is down this morning. I think it's down like 1.6%. Let me just get to that really quick. It's down 2.2% three percent this morning so how do i figure out how i'm going to sell upstart and what the value would be well that's great so i'm going to introduce everybody there's a link below i use moomoo as one of my trading apps i trade four different accounts i mentioned that now the reason there's a link below is because moomoo is doing a special promotion for those that do not have accounts if you open up an account you'll get one free stock if you put $100 into your account and fund it, you'll get four more free stocks, which will take you up to five free stocks. If you put $1,000 into your account, you'll get 10 additional free stocks, which will take you up to 15 free stocks. And because you're either subscribed or you're clicking on our link below and you're part of our membership just on YouTube, you're gonna get five more free stocks. So again, if you want to make money without investing, you could open up a Moomoo account, $100, 
one free stock plus four more. Now you're up to five, a thousand, 10 more free stocks. Now you're up to 15. And because you're part of our referral program, you get five free stocks for free. So you're up to 20 free stocks. Now, what do I like to use Moomoo for? I like to use it for the theoretical price calculator, meaning I'm talking about upstart. Upstart's down 2.23% pre-market. I've got a doctor's appointment at nine o'clock today, nine till 10. I'm trying to figure out what I can sell my option for. Now my option closed around $2.11 yesterday or $211. Upstart is off 2% this morning. I put in the theoretical price into Upstart, and it tells me my option should go for $2.71 each, or $271. If I want to nibble, I'll ask for another 1% or 2% and ask for $275. So I love using Moomoo for certain aspects. Theoretical option pricing is one of the best, because if you're watching an option, you say, Okay, theoretically, I'm looking for the SPY to drop down to $412.50. How much would my put options be worth? I can go type it into Upstart, figure it out, and realize what I could ask on the way out. So that's why Upstart is great. I just had to share that. Again, our link below gives you an extra five stocks that nobody else gives you should you sign up. Okay, so I mentioned debt ceiling worries. Let's just keep going. I'm going to mention a couple other things that can really control the market today. I mentioned interest rates. Okay, here, this is pretty interesting. Semiconductor stocks. And whoever was with me on yesterday morning, Thursday morning live stream, I mentioned semiconductor stocks were ripping. And I mentioned if I had to make a play on a semiconductor stock, rather than being bullish, AMD, NVIDIA, Micron, and chasing, I would be bearish on Intel. Let's remember yesterday morning, it was down 1.56% when I was talking about this. Do you know where Intel did close down yesterday? Down 6%. NVIDIA up 24%. Taiwan Semiconductor up 12. AMD 11. Marvel 8. Broadcom 7. Applied Materials 7. Um, Micron 5%. Intel yesterday down 6%. So again, just because a whole industry is going higher, you can find cracks in that industry and Intel happens to be a crack in the industry. Um, mentioned the dark pool, mentioned upstart. Uh, Speaker McCarthy mentioned no deal, but they're going to be working through the weekend. The latest proposal was two years of um, holding. Um, well, we'll get to that later. Okay, here, very interesting point and why, again, I think the market could face some downward pressure. And uh, smart gentleman on Twitter, given Secretary Yellen is slated to pull out $125 billion worth of liquidity over the market over the next three days. Now, they're pulling liquidity to help support the government. Remember, we're down to about $50 billion, which will last us to about June 5th to June 7th. As she pulls out liquidity in the market, it gives her an extra day or two. So now I'm hearing um, if she pulls out liquidity, which she's slated to do, $125 billion over the next three trading days, that this will last the U.S. government until about June 9th. Okay, so there's a little more time. Um, however, assuming the correlation between the government's account balance and the queues holding tech could see a sell-off through the middle of next week. Again, just a smart person. I saw it. Muddy Waters retweeted it. Um, Costco came out with earnings. Not that crazy about it, but if you look at the pattern that Costco saw after it came out with earnings, it had a pretty severe drop of $18 and then quickly rebounded. So I will be watching Costco today. Now, for those that don't know what PCE is, ahead of the PCE numbers coming out at 8.30, I will quickly explain. Okay, economists estimate that headline PCA will edge higher 4.3 year on year in April, up from 4.2 in March. Again, it would be a higher PCE, one tenth of 1%. Headline inflation is predicted to grow by three tenths of 1% month over month, accelerating from the one tenth of 1% from March. So again, they're predicting three tenths um, headline growth month over month when we're expecting one-tenth from the previous month. Core PCE, which excludes energy, foods, and it provides a more accurate description of inflation, is predicted to stay stable at about 4.6 for the year and 0.3 for the month. If it comes in at 4.7, 4.8, you'll see the markets go down. If it comes in 4.4, 4.5, you'll see the markets have a little upward pressure. Um, 
Let's just get into it. This is my baby account yesterday again, 40% gain. It's great. Um, I'm trading a little more these days. Again, Fed swaps rates showing quarter point hike fully priced in by July meeting. Okay, I'm mentioning the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar at 104.20 is passing its 20-day moving average. Again, as the U.S. dollar goes up, it puts downward pressure on the market. I, of course, checking out futures at this time, and I can share that with you all, and we can talk about the SPY ranges. So let's do that. Let me just remove this from our screen, present, share screen. Let's get the SPY up there and talk about the SPY ranges and what we can see, and we'll talk about where the SPY is right now. Okay, so as I shoot this at 5.37 a.m., again, be very cautious because we have PCE coming out today. Again, tech has been ripping while the Dow has been struggling. I think the Dow has been down like 17 out of the last 19 trading days. So let's talk about the SPY, SPY ranges, okay? Right now we're sitting right at 414. If you're on my Discord, 414 was a point of contention yesterday. We struggled around 414 a number of times. We rejected 414.50. We touched 412.50. We're back at 414.50. Struggled. Okay, so you can see exactly what I mean. This is the five minute. If we go to the daily chart, you can see that we're still trading a same range. And anytime we were above Okay, closing in on 420. Hopefully you guys can see this with me. You can. Anytime we were closing in on 420 or so, we were rejecting with some decent value, a volume four out of the last five days outflow, which puts us back in this range of 415, right? To about 412. Uh, 412, I guess I gotta go to smaller chart. 415, which you see on the top side. Again, we hit 416 yesterday. We did it a couple times down at 414. So what can I expect to happen today? I'll give you my bull case and bear case scenario, okay? I've already given you the reasoning for the bear case scenario, why there could be some downward pressure on tech stocks today. In fact, on the whole market, again, I'll watch the US dollar. I don't expect debt ceiling talks to be agreed on today. So we're gonna go into the weekend, which will put make many investors a little more nervous again who wants to carry positions over the long weekend monday is a holiday so the casino is closed and then we're back on tuesday if a deal is made over the weekend yeah you'll see a bump tuesday morning if you're in puts again it could be dangerous if there's no deal made then people are really going to start getting worried by the time tuesday opens up of next week so again me i want to be in and out and secure profit the three s's right safety stress-free and secure profit. Ever since I've been trading this way, I'm now nine straight days green. It means less trading for me. It means if I make two trades and I'm green and I've made my money on the day, that there's no reason, although I'm following the market, to have to be correct a third time. Let's remember, I used to overtrade. I had weeks where I made 256 trades in a single week. Now I'll have weeks where I'll make six or seven trades in a full week. All right, so back to the SPY, back to my prediction for today. Again, we'll go bull case and bear case. Bear case is, all right, we're going to spike. We're going to go be bought up on open, and we'll go to $415.50. Once we go to $415.50, we'll draw back. We have about a four, four and a half point range today. So if $415.50 is the high side, then I would look for $411 on the low side. Again, point of contention will be the dark pool levels, and we'll talk about that. But there could be a hiccup at $411.84, at $412.50, at $413.14, um, and then at $414.86, which is where we closed under yesterday. So again, pay specific attention, and we'll talk about the dark pool levels. So again, your bear case scenario is we spike back on open. We hit that 415.50 range, maybe even a 416 range. If we hit 416 and then we go down, we're going to touch 412. How can I say that? You take the high point, hypothetically 416. You say the SPY is going to trade in a four-point range, which is, you know, you could pull out what it's been doing. Okay, I put out my, my little piece of paper on what the SPY has been doing. I make little notes for myself so I know what points to look at for support or rejection. With that said, points of support or rejection, 414.83. Well, we closed slightly there under yesterday. Then you get the largest dark pool level or one of them, 413.18. So now that I'm sitting with the SPY at 
probably 414 right on the dot pre-market. If it goes down, I'm looking at $413.18. If it crosses over that, $412.50 and $411.42. So again, bear case scenario, we go up to $415 and we come down and we touch that $411.42. That's my thoughts on bear case and what's most likely to happen today. I'll give you the bull case scenario. The bull case scenario is the market sells off into open. We gap down a little more. We find support at $413.18, and then we shoot back up to $416.60. Again, bull case scenario, you're going to find entry. $413.13 would be support in a bull case scenario, and then we're going to shoot up from there and touch yesterday's high, which is $416.50. Again, you would need to be bullish you would need to say oh amd looks like great value at this oh um apple sure i want to buy apple i want to buy google after it just ran a few more dollars yesterday again there are other stocks that had some pullbacks we saw google ripping to what 254 and then finally consolidate to 252 in fact i can pull a little google and we can talk about what other stocks are here so we saw google rip higher in the morning 126 it tried to rip higher again 126 it closed at 124.34 and now it's 124.24 so it's off just slightly this morning i'll take out a couple other stocks again downward pressure on shopify I'm seeing the rejection looking at the five minute i'll look at something like a dow play that's had pretty beat up uh, starbucks again move from 109 to 105 to 103 back to 99 i'm thinking could it go lower just like disney and yes it did go lower because yesterday's high just under 100 which seemed to reject okay and then we pushed down to a low of like 98 dollars again a two percent move and i'm just trying to get a feel for the market to see if there are any industries that could definitely push higher and take the market higher again i'm looking at nvidia working nvidia um, come back to well we made a pretty strong move and we jumped higher and they were selling and volume was good so if nvidia is going to pull back we saw it pull back yesterday to 367 on open if nvidia pulls back three points on some profit taking wouldn't be surprised um checking uber uber had a crazy bounce yesterday i mean a couple days ago um yeah nothing really Sticking out again, we spoke about Disney back in the $88 range. We could talk about that when it was 109, when it was 102. I said the downside potential could be $88. So, again, what am I going to do? Well, I've got my plan in order. Again, if I'm looking for a bull case scenario, I'm looking for a market pullback and then a shoot up. So, a pullback to 413, shoot up to 416 and a half. If I see support at 413 and I'm in puts or I'm bearish the market, which I am. That'll give me opportunity to secure profit. Let's remember, today's Friday. Friday's going to be a little crazy. It's a weekend, long weekend, Monday holiday. So some traders on Wall Street will start taking off around 2 p.m., 2.30, so they can head out to the Hamptons. So again, I'm expecting good volume on open, decent volume um, towards the end of the day. But again, I'm expecting less traders to be in-house, so maybe a little smaller movement. Um, if you want to stick with me, Throughout the day, follow me on Discord. I believe Romeo will be doing some live trading this morning. So again, whereas I don't like to trade at 930, he's primed and ready to share his trading strategies and his entry points with everybody that wants to follow. Um, with that said, if you like what I do, please thumbs up. Join me again on Monday. And everybody, sorry, Tuesday. And everybody, have a fantastic weekend. Happy trading. Be safe.